Hey, welcome, Paul Burgess. How are you going, buddy? I'm good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, good. I was going to say, old man, you're um, you, 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 in a respectful way, though, because you've been uh, a bit of a mentor and a friend. And um, we keep talking about like four years ago, you said, hey, Marty, you should come on my podcast. And I went, oh, a bit nervous. I'm not sure I'm there yet. And, you know, I think it's, we just did our fourth podcast recording. Your, it's now oh, the um, yeah. functional nutrition podcast it used to be the athletic health and nutrition used be, podcast used to, yeah it used to be athletic nutrition podcast and it is now the paul burgess functional medicine show simply because that's the evolution that has happened over the last 15 years and um and it's more i mean i went through a very successful stage in athletes and all that kind of jazz and it was all very interesting back then um, but now it's more about helping people who are really properly sick and mm. looking to get their life back. And, and someone asked me the other day, what do you do? And I said, well, basically, when, when people have been to the doctors and the specialists and the consultants mm. and, and got nowhere or said there's nothing we can do, or they've all said mm, it's all in your head, mm. that's when they come to me. And that's when we sort them out properly. And there's so many stories behind that, which I'm sure we'll cover. But um yeah. but yeah so that's really what my practice does now it's global we have patients in australia and obviously europe uk africa middle east far east america and it's uh it's crazy stuff yeah same sort of story with um our friend elizma who used to be the yeah. little um in nutritionist down the road at the health shop and we could go see her all the time and she was basically a family doctor but you know functional medicine when done right is incredibly powerful and money spent decades going to all those people you just listed getting minimal help and Elizma was able just to put the finger on the really difficult issues and and give a guidance that she went i've yeah, nobody else has helped me this much before. So when when it's done well, it's amazing, and um, people people really need that help at the extreme end. And I'm sure it's a really interesting career, mate. It's it's insanely just so rewarding. You can't mm. believe. You know, we're like people that will come to me who've been sick for ten years, can't get out of bed, have got no functionality, all the rest of it had all the testing and literally within a couple of weeks they're kind of going like okay this isn't right i'm feeling good i'm able to move i'm able to get out i went out with the family the other day for the first time it was insane and and what people don't realize is you can make someone feel better quite quickly like you know mm. if they go on one of your use one of your books or use the data driven fasting where they can feel better quite quickly but they're not mm. fixed they just mm. feel better and and mm. you get them to feel better so that they are able to do more work and comply mm. to that work mm. where the problem is with most diets if you like because that's your specialist gig is people feel better in the first week or two and they go oh, I'm, I'm i've got this crap now i can go back to eat the ice cream it's fine and um, and then all the weight piles back on again so for me a patient will work with me for about a year and mm. it's very very regular, like every two weeks we sit down, we implement what next has to happen, how we have to get rid of their mold, or have to get rid of the toxicity or the heavy metals or the cholesterol or whatever it is. Mm. And um, and by the end of it, the goal is for them to live a happy, fulfilling life. Mm. And that is something that most people miss. Like, yeah. it's insane because what else is there? Like, yeah. You, you, you want to live a happy, fulfilling life and yet most people are concerned about what diet should I have? I've got this mm. back pain, I've got this headache, I've got no energy, I can't sleep. I've, I've got to do this thing at work. If I don't, once I get that promotion, then I'll have more time, really. Okay, yeah. you see if you get promotion, you've got more time on your hands. Like, and all, <laughs> they're, all they're doing is focusing on all of this really stressful, non-productive, quite unhappy kind of areas. And, and they look back after 10 years and go, what happened there? Yeah, yeah. And they've missed that life. And this is something I tell a lot of people, and you've probably heard it because you listen to my podcast about me sometimes. But this is the way I explain it, right? We're all born with a bank account. And you can't put anything in, but every 24 hours, you withdraw 24 hours. 
Right, so mm. every day you take out another 24 hours. And if that 24 hours is spent miserable, depressed, in pain, bad health, anxious, whatever it is, that 24 hours has been spent and is now gone and you go back to the ATM and you take out another 24 hours. And if you, again, depressed and anxious and ill and whatever else it is, that's gone and you've thrown it away again. Now, our problem is we don't know what the balance is in our account. Right, so I might have two days left. I might have 2,000 days. Who knows? But if every day is spent less than happy and amazed and, and having a joyful life, it's gone. It ain't you've never wasted. come back. You've wasted it. Right, but, and, and, but people don't get it. They really don't. Because everything is a circumstance that they are not confident with or is out of their control. So we were just recording on my show and we were talking about how people are not confident in the diet they're following. Mm. Right? And because they're not going, is this the right one for me? Should I go carnivore? Should I be vegan? But that person says I need to do, I need to fast and I need one meal a day. That person says, if you're not, if you're not eating algae from the northern lakes of Norway, of Norway then you're never going to get the ultimate health, right? And, and you know, the internet's full of that kind of stuff. So people are not confident in their own choices because there is too much of it out there. And so they stress over that. As soon as you yeah. address those things, imagine having a scenario where your diet, you didn't have to think about because you're confident with it. You knew what you were doing for your health was right because you were getting things back under control. So the underlying infection has gone. You've got more energy. You can sleep now. You're not as stressed. You have a much better time with your family. You're much more creative, much more passionate. And you're able to then physically and, and mentally focus on what are the amazing things life is offering me right now. Mm. Because it is. Like I'm, I'm standing here in a room. There's a window in front of me. And outside, all I can see are trees. And believe it or not, in, in London, parrots. Not kidding me. Green parrots <laughs> in red places, right? I don't know what that, I don't know how they're there, right? But a load of other things. And I can look at all the colors on it and just go, that's amazing. That's an insanely beautiful picture that I can take on board and say, I'm looking for that kind of stuff every day. Someone else could sit in this same spot and not even notice what's around them because they're so con so focused on all the problems that are going on. Mm -hmm. And so once all that's addressed, mate, life changes inexplicably. And that's mm -hmm. the goal. So I'll give you a good example. I had a uh, patient from Russia and um, came to me with all sorts of issues. And, and, and just a very quick example of it is that the last time we got on a call, she said to me, I cleared out my kitchen today. I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, I cleared out my kitchen. It's all, I can see the work surfaces now. It's all, it's all neat and tidy. I said, okay, well, what, why was that? And she said, well, I had so much stuff. I had all these superfoods or, or magical ingredients or whatever it is, you know, the maca root or the, the mm. mushrooms or whatever it was. And I accumulated them over time and I've just got rid of them. But she didn't really understand why. And I explained it to her and I said, look, the reason you got rid of them was because historically you knew there were things that were wrong and you didn't know what was going to fix it. So you got everything. Mm -hmm. And you get them because one day it might be the answer. Mm. Now that we've got everything under control, now that you know what you're doing is working, now you're seeing the results, you realize none of that is needed. Mm. So you got rid of it all. And now you're much more happier much more less stressed. You know, yeah, she used to have a very, very stressful. Imagine being brought up in Russia. You're going to, everything's very regimented. You know, you've got to do this, and you can't possibly one one minute late, and all that kind of stuff. And she had a lot of stuff. She grew up near Chernobyl, always handy for thyroid problems, right? Good and, and, stress. And, she, wow. and she suffered all, suffered all her life with it. And, and you know, we fixed a lot of stuff for her. But but there, these examples are you know, not uncommon when you start really working properly with people. So getting mm. people to really get a healthy, fulfilling and happy life at the end mm. of the process is what's amazing. Yeah, I love it that your focus even more so now is on, you know, getting healthy so you can live a fuller, happier life and live a long life you love living. It's not all about getting obsessed about being healthy for the sake of being healthy and 
being perfect or optimal all the time. It's just understanding how you can move towards optimal and be a bit better today than yesterday. But only you know, invest the level of effort you need to. Some of your clients obviously need to invest a massive amount of effort to get from where they were to where they are now. But you know, for most people, it's just doing those simple little steps each day to keep moving yeah. forward. And yeah, and, but so, it's not their fault. To be honest with you, it, oftentimes it's not their fault. They'll pick up. Like I got a, re a report back today for someone that we did a test on because we we do a lot of testing, and you know, she's been quite sick for a long time, really low energy, and all the rest of it. And um, uh, and it turns out she's got Lyme, and she's also got some other viruses that are all known to be fatigue causing, even. Uh, MS driven mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and so we now need to really get in there and get this fixed and get mm -hmm. out some of that, that stuff and that's going to make a, a big difference for her but it's not her fault that she's got Lyme or she's picked up these viruses and so getting people to understand one they're not the cause of it they're not the problem um, two there is a way out of it mm -hmm. and three it takes time there's no quick fix mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you understand those things, then you you will invest your time and money into getting it fixed. Yeah, one thing you've kept telling me in our friendship, and so you've been a bit of a mentor, and every time we chat, you give me some sage words of wisdom. But, but it just to simplify things and bring it back to the the most elemental step. And I, I'm looking through all your podcast, 175 or more podcasts you've done with all these really smart people about all this amazing technology and you talk about all the testing you do and some people want to jump to complexity and get overwhelmed by that and they like you're saying with the supplements they throw all their money at the supplements hoping that that'll be the fix but i mean i thought as i was listening to all your stuff what are the non-negotiable big rocks that people need to get in place first what do you guide people like here's the first step it's not you know i know you're interested in mold detoxification if somebody who's got complex blood issues can dive down that rabbit hole but what what are the first steps that people need to get in place you know what it, it's 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 a bit crazy really <clears throat> and this is why it works so well there's very few people in the world that do what i do in my opinion there are people who do similar mm. things but i don't mm. think they all see it the same as i do and um, i'm sure that other people do stuff in other ways that's really good as well so i'm not saying I'm the uh, greatest person, but I'm pretty good, I think. And I'll tell you where it starts, is with a question, which is what's most important to you about your health? Mm. Because a lot of people will come with an issue and they went, oh, I just want to get this fixed. And they've had it for years and they've looked for the quick fix, right? They've gone, oh, I've tried the maca root, I've tried the aloe vera juice, I've tried the fasting, I've tried the other, whatever the magic, potion is um, but none of them have actually worked or worse mm -hmm. still they come with a long list of biohacks they're doing mm -hmm. like literally I wake up in the morning and I do five minutes journaling and then I do grounding and I have the coffee with the certain MCT oil and then I do the meditation or whatever and then I do something else then I do 12.4 minutes of hit training and then I do this and then I have my breakfast and you go great how's that going for you he says well all my hair's falling out. I've got no energy and I've got no sex drive. And it's not to fix when, it. Yeah, well, when do you, they're not working, right? So when do you have time for fun? Well, no, I don't because I'm biohacking all day so I can live my best life. A hundred percent is the problem. And we'll, I'm sure we'll hit that. But here's the one thing you say, well, what's the first thing you start with? What's most important to you about your health? Hmm. And I'll give you an example of this. Guy comes to me. He owns... Um, Oh, eight fast food outlets and um, maybe nine. And um, he's a youngish guy, 30 years old. He says, I just want more energy. I'm fatigued in the afternoon. So, okay, great. Have a coffee, right? Drink a Red Bull, if that's what the problem is. But it's not what, it's not the real thing. And the reason, mm -hmm. I, the reason I need to find out what the real thing is, is because it's very difficult for people to grasp there's no quick fix. Mm. And the reason for that is culturally, everything's so easy for us now. Everything's mm. easy and no, uh, uh, and fast. So less effort and I can have it instantly, right? Instant mm. self-gratification in anything. So 
you don't have to put the wipers on on your car anymore. It's that ridiculous. Or the lights. It all Good happens all day, right? You don't need to go to the bank and queue up. You might not. I mean, in my day, you used to have to queue up at the bank and put your money in or take your money out. Now, I don't even, my, my bank doesn't even have branches. It's all online. Right? I could do everything, touch a button, I could send you, not I'm going to, but I could send you money straight away, right? And it'll be with you in 30 seconds, right? So, but, but here's the point everything works really fast, whatever it is, in whatever aspect of life. And it's very easy, there's no effort. Mm. And people expect our bodies to work the same way, our health, especially. Oh, if it's broken, I'll just fix it, I'll just take that and I'll be okay, right? Mm. And what they don't realize is, our bodies work off of 500,000 year old software that's never had an upgrade. And you can't expect it to work like your iPhone. Mm. Like it's gonna it takes a long time and takes a lot of effort on your part. So this mm. is the other thing, which is a, a stumbling block is, if I pay someone to wash my car, I don't need to do anything. I mm. pay for it, right? If I pay someone to make the extension of my house, I don't need to do anything. But if I pay someone to look after my health, I need to put the effort in. That's a concept people don't get. It's like, right, I paid you. Go on then. Fix me. Make me better. You go, okay, well, but here's the thing, okay? The reason that people want it quick and fast and that they, they don't realize they've got to put the effort in is because it's not really connected to what's most important to them. So go back to our man with the fast food outlet. I'm tired in the afternoon. Okay, well, why? So this is the questioning that I'll go through with every patient. Okay, well, why is it important for you to have energy in the afternoon? Oh, I've got all these businesses to run and I need to run around and go to all these places. I say, okay, but why is it important to have energy at these places? Oh, so I can make better decisions. But why do you need to make better decisions? Well, I've got all these people that rely on me and it's a big business and, you know, I've got to keep it running and I've got responsibilities. So, okay, but why is it important for you to have energy to make sure that you've got responsibility, you, you know, meeting your responsibilities? Well, because I want to make better decisions. And yeah, but why is it important to make better decisions? And he says, well, 20 years ago, my father started this business and me and my sister run it now. And so I want to make sure I can run it properly and expand it. I said, okay, let me save you some time. Would you really agree that the real reason is because you don't want to let your father down after he gave you this business? You mean, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Okay, no problem. We can do that. But now I know what the most, the real reason is. Yeah. If I then say to him, you need to do some stuff, which he finds uncomfortable, he's much more likely to do it because it's related to the most important thing. Mm. If I say you've got to do this stuff, it will help you with your fatigue. It won't really have much leverage on him he'll be like mm. yeah, but i don't really want to do that what else can i do can't i just take something but if i'm saying look this is going to stop you letting your father down now and in the future and not only that you will be more creative more passionate more available to people energized and you're going to you're going to absolutely smash this then all of a sudden he's like okay what do i need to do mm. so that's the first thing right and someone comes in let's see what's the most important thing to you about your health mm. and then look at how do we create whatever treatment protocol we need to give them that along with optimizing all their mm. health parameters getting rid of what health problems they've got you know really viral bacterial whatever and getting them to a place where they know this is what i need to do on a daily basis that not only keeps me well but gives me a happy fulfilling life mm. and then go off and do it and mm. and actually live that life very, very few people in the world are doing that right now. And very few yeah. people are living that life, by the way. Yeah. So I was with somebody yesterday I hadn't seen for a while. This week is like all about catching up with people I haven't seen, like you. <laughs> and, right? It's pretty cool. And I sat with him and he, and he said, oh, how, 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 how are you? You know, how's things? I said, amazing. I, said, I am absolutely loving life at the moment. It's so insane. It's, it's great. And he looked at me like I was out of the nut house. Right? He's just like, why are you happy? Happy, what? happy. Yeah. Are you being serious? And um, <clears throat> and it is. It's just that's how I created this life that I'm very happy to live. And that's what we want for all of our patients. And yeah. so we use every sort of tr testing we need, 
any sort of protocol we need, any sort of treatment, whatever it is, um, and we get these amazing results from it. Yeah. Um, once you're happy, once you're living your best life, once you're living a life you enjoy living, you're going to be lower stress, lower anxiety, lower cortisol, and your health is going to be so much better because you're just living a life you love, even if you're busy and active and doing a whole lot of things, if you're living the life you actually created and want to live, not driven by external obligations or just, you know, the, the doom scrolling dopamine reward cycle of social media and just living in that and living in fear. It's just a different paradigm if you can have, you know, I've been digging into Cal Newport lately. He's a fascinating guy. I wrote Deep Work and a World Without Email and just talks about the way to not waste all your life on things you don't want to be doing, particularly social media, is to, to not say I'm not going to do that. It's to get out and create the life you want to live and, and live, have active leisure and, and do beneficial things and say this is the life I want to be living and then that won't be attractive because you'd be so busy living this amazing life that you created okay. and intentionally crafted. Um, so you know Happy people tend to be healthier. Just think about totally, it. Totally. So back to biohacking and all the different biohacks and devices, um, you, you, you encouraged me to get an aura ring a while back and we're telling you about all the things you learnt and, yeah. and you've had a million different devices and... What are your thoughts on devices now in your You're referring to a comment I made on a, on a different show. And, um, yeah, I like that one. So I'll tell you what my, my, uh, uh, my thoughts are on devices. Um, I think they cause a lot of anxiety and detract from a lot of happiness that you could be having. When used in the wrong way, which is what most of them are. So I've got mm. all of them, right? So I'm actually wearing an aura ring today. But I'm, ring, I'm wearing it because I'm doing something specific and I want to see how it affects my sleep. Hmm. And once that's done, which is about eight days, I will take it off and I won't bother using it until the next thing that I want to check. Hmm. Because I found if I'm using it every day, I'll, I'll be getting up, looking at the numbers, oh, I didn't get enough deep sleep, or I didn't get this, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And then that would, that would almost set the tone for the day. And you're, I'm a failure. you're, you're having the moment you wake up. You're having this anxiety over things that really we well, can't do anything about. That was yesterday. Oh, I've got to do it again. I've got to change this. I've got to have more magnesium. I've got to do that. And actually, no, you don't. You just need to relax. Stop doing what you were doing yesterday by getting anxious over the the readings of the Polar Watch or the Aura Ring. Nothing wrong with Aura, by the way. They're lovely. And I have just ordered their version, their, their Generation 3, right? New one. Simply because... Why? Because I want to see what it does, how it works, and is it useful as an intervention for any patients? Hmm. Because if you get them, go, look, this is going to work for you and it's going to make you visually see what you're doing on your sleep, why this is affecting it, we can then start changing your beliefs around your behaviours. Hmm. And that is key to anybody. So it's useful from that perspective. But hmm. I think we've gone a little bit crazy with tracking everything to the nth degree thinking it's going to give us some miraculous answer which it's not and mm. and that's the problem you know we're yeah. we're putting our our future happiness or our current happiness on hold for some imaginary time in the future when all this all this stuff comes together and it works ain't happening right that day is not coming stop it and be happy today and find what you need to do to be happy today and knowing that, knowing what you need to do is key, which is another thing that we do a lot in in my practice. Yeah. Yeah, I love how you talk about what we've learned is the minimum effective dose of tracking and data and using it for a purpose for a time to retrain your practices and your habits and get that into place and then move on and sense the world and feel the world and understand your body and actually be in touch with your body and observe go yeah i did have a crap night's sleep maybe it's because of this and i'll try and do that better tonight but if you're always trying to get a better score on the aura ring or the whoop strip or you know it just triggers like you said that anxiety from this another boss and then you've you've created your your work boss and your you know family obligations and then you've got to make the aura ring happy and the step counter happy and close your 
rings on the Apple yeah. Watch, and everything all at once. And, and you know, maybe one thing at a time is useful, but everything all at once just seems to explode our brains and the more of understood what we're doing it's really using data to retrain your subconscious to build habits that help you move forward and just so, can't train new habits with eight different inputs all at once correct and, and also if we're talking about training this is a revelation that came to me recently so now i've been in the gym since i was 15 years old mm. and so that's 40 years that's just sad right and um and some form of exercise and i hate the gym now i can't stand it i've got one in my hat at the end of my garden very nice one thank you very much i can't remember the last time i was in there and but i do still exercise every week and i do it actually somewhere else with with somebody else with a trainer who trains me on certain things that i want to do and mm. um that i find very useful and i only train three days a week for an hour at a time and that's literally it right but mm. um here's here's what i've realized <clears throat> Near enough, all of the training programs that people follow were designed or have been designed for an eventual event of some description, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a strongman event, whether it's a triathlon, whether it's getting up on stage as a bodybuilder or whatever it is. Yet no one's trained, no one's doing the event, right? So they'll keep doing push pull legs for the next five years or whatever it is, and these really quite intense and quite um, focused training blocks. And, and yet it goes on forever. It, it never actually has an end result. These things mm. weren't supposed to be done all the time. You're not supposed to be in the gym for 40 years. Like that's not what it's about, especially if you're going four days a week or five days a week. Mm. Right? What you're meant to do is give your body enough physical exertion so that it is fit and healthy. Mm. And then you can focus on living a happy life elsewhere. There ain't nobody in a gym that's happy. They're all sitting there grimacing, and oh my god, I've got to do an hour on the treadmill and all the rest of it. And I know, and and you'll see that, especially if they're doing steady state cardio, they're trying to distract themselves as much as possible from the from the boredom of it, right? Whether it's with headphones on or watching a film or whatever it is, that doesn't mean that's a good activity. Hmm. And I'm not about like, oh, you shouldn't do it. You shouldn't do cardiovascular training. I'm not, it's not about that at all. It's about what do I need to do to give me the best bang for my buck and the mm. minimum effective dose? Because mm. then I can get on and enjoy my life. Mm. And be like, oh, yeah, but I enjoy training. Do you? Well, I'll tell you what, try not doing it anymore and then tell me what else you would do. And you know what? A lot of them come up with, well, I wouldn't. I've got nothing else I'd rather do. No, you've got no imagination, right? And you've been and you and you've been doctrinated into this thing that this is where your happiness is, but it's not. Hmm. Because what they're doing is they've got a goal that they're trying to achieve. Now we're going to get into goal setting, and everyone's going to switch off now and think I'm completely crazy, right? <laughs> Isn't it just to look like your Instagram six pack models that are, you know, on yeah every steroid and everything you can to make you and, and, feel insecure. And when I get there, then I'll be happy. Mm. Okay. But you never so do. firstly, you ain't never getting there because that's not reality. Mm. And secondly, I mean, it's bad enough when we had magazines with photo shop, uh, you know, whatever they did, airbrushing or whatever it was. Well, now you can filter anything you like and make anybody look amazing. And you get thousands of images every day of this. And you go, well, that must be mm. me. I need to be like that because they look so happy. Mm. They're not happy. They're miserable. Trust me. Right. And not only that, the process to get there is miserable. Right. Mm. You're training, you're overtraining, you're under eating, your sleep's gone to crap. You, you're stimulated out of your head with caffeine and whatever other stimulants you choose to take to get to a point where you go, yeah, look, I woke up like this. They didn't. We spent six months training and dieting to get here. And then what happened was next week, in fact, in two hours, you're going to be fat again. So where, the the donuts. where was the happiness in all mm. of that process? You spent 12 weeks getting to that point, And there was that one one minute where you felt happy, you got on the stage or whatever it is, and you look, I look amazing. And then it all went to crap again because not only did you get a huge food complex, and issue about dysmorphia 
but you hated the process, but you just did it because it's going to pay off one day, and it never did. Mm. Honestly, complete waste of time. And most people' yeah. goals are around that, right? Whatever it mm. is, I've got to get X amount of money. I've got to open another four shops, or I need to get this thing in my business, or that car, or that watch, or that whatever it is. So when I get that, that's going to give me the happiness. And it's not. Mm. It's just going to be another possession that you get and you go, oh, now what? Mm. I'm still empty. But if you can be happy and fulfilled in what you do right now, you can appreciate the car when you get it mm. and appreciate the money or appreciate the watch or appreciate the holiday or the whatever it is because you go, do you know what? I feel so amazing. This stuff is just enhancing it. Mm. But if you wait till you get there, one, you may never get there. And two, it's just going to be empty. Mm. And we go back to this, you take out another 24 hours and it's screwed up and thrown away. When do you think that's going to stop? Right, It's going to stop at the very end. And it's a hard stop, by the way. It's not like, oh, I can't just go back and redo that because it was a bit rubbish. This is the end. And you've got to start enjoying it now. And like I say, if you haven't got control of your health, if, you, if you're not confident in what you're doing every day that is the best for you and you're dealing mm. with the underlying issues, then it's very, very difficult. But as soon as you do, you realize hey, these other things aren't important. Yeah. That was my I, rant, I, I love, I lo I love the, the, the old wise Paul Burgess. This is great. So yeah. um, speaking of devices, you, you were playing with a, a CGM with Dove Driven Fasting. You reached out. Oh, you were one of our first guinea pigs way back in the day. You still started with fasting and you play with it. But here's the thing, right? I've still got one on my bookshelf and I haven't used it because I don't need to do it all the time. It's yeah. for specific things at times, right? And um, I think you're, well, I, I can't remember if I said it on this one or on my show, whatever it was, but basically what you're doing is changing lives in the world and sadly you don't get it. Intellectually you might do, Intellectually, you might do, but you feel that there's that this you've still got a lot to prove to people and a lot of information they must have before they can really get the benefit, and that, that's why your posts are so stressingly wrong, <laughs> right? But the reality is, the reality is, what you do changes lives, like mm. changes lives, Marty, and you have to understand that you are the person doing it, right. Mm. So it's a phenomenal thing that you've created and you don't know the value of it yet, unfortunately. One day you'll wake up and realize it. But right now, I'm telling you, you have. And that stuff does a couple of things that other, other books and videos and whatever don't do. That is one, it gets people to realize from a bespoke perspective, from their own mm. body metabolism perspective, what they need to do not what the general thing says in the book. And two, it gets them to understand more what works and doesn't for them particularly. Mm. Because there's there's a lot of people out there with very good genetics that say, look, you need to eat loads of carbs at night because it really helps with your sleep and this, that, and the other, and it's the thing. And yeah, for a very small percentage of people, that's true. But for everybody else that tries it, they're just going to get fat. And then there's the other end of the scale that says, you've got to be carnivore because if you're not, any plant you eat will, will destroy you and kill you. you know, they all kill you. They're bad. They're evil. Well, we seem to have thrived pretty well on plants over the last 10,000 years. But anyway. We're pretty adaptive species. And, um, and then there's, and, you know, there's so much conflicting stuff around. And people have got to stop listening to that noise. Hmm. They've got to just turn it off and just do their own thing. Stay in your lane, right? Hmm. What's best for me? What's good to eat? When should I eat? When am I really hungry? And once you've got that, forget everything else. Do not try and make it even better still. Do not try and look for a, like some other amazing thing because we're all distracted by shiny objects. Mm. Here's the new thing. Look, oh, what's that over there? That says I can do it in half the time. Right. Mm, right. Don't do it. Just focus on you. Do what makes you healthy, happy, and then get on with enjoying life. And that's what your stuff does, right? Yeah. But I mean, and I know it's it's um, it's packaged as a data driven fasting thing, and you know, there's a community and all the rest of it, and that's it, and it's great and it's lovely and it supports people. I get it, 
But at the end of the day, that individual that does it properly mm. and in, invests in it for themselves, time and money and whatnot, gets mm. a better result than they're going to get anywhere else. Mm. And then finally, what I will say is, and I said this on my one, um, it should be called data-driven eating, <laughs> right? Because that's when you eat, right? You you eat according to the data. And But from my perspective, it really shows you what hunger is, how your mm. body reacts to things, how we've got lost in culture about it's okay to eat that or I should eat at these times or, mm. you know, why shouldn't I do that? I've fasted all day. Surely I should be able to eat all that food. And it really undoes, it unravels all of that nonsense that we've been influenced mm. by mm. and lets us think, okay, none of that worked. Right? I'm pre-diabetic. I'm 30 pounds overweight. I've got no energy. I can't sleep. My sex drive is in the pan. Okay. Well, clearly that's wrong. Let me go and fix this stuff. And that's what your, that's what your stuff does. Thanks, man. Pain, uh, pain I like your encouragement. You've always just gone, Marty, you've got something here. You've got to get it out to the world. And, and you still uh, don't believe it. That's yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting well, there. We'll I'll see. keep mentoring and coaching me. Uh, it's so cool. So what makes Paul happy? What you talk, you talk about finding a happiness and doing what makes you happy at 55. What are you, you just more passionate than ever. I love it's it. Life, man. It's awesome. I'm trying not to swear on your, on your podcast. <laughs> Explicit sign on it. Um, but, but life is amazing and you don't realize it because we're so caught up in this nonsense. And a mm. lot of that, has uh, is down to your beliefs about mm. what you should and shouldn't have, why you should be doing this and all that kind of thing, or what's important in life. Mm. And um, I put a post up, I think, yesterday or the day before or something like that, and it basically said, the quality of your life can be measured by the amount of negative thoughts you have about yourself and the world around you. Mm. And I was speaking to somebody randomly last week, and he was talking about, oh, yeah, you know, the government, this just squanders all our tax and, you know, it's pointless and I'm going to move and this and that. And I'm like, wow. If, you, if, if, that, if that's the sort of thoughts that you're having, mm. you haven't, you, you, there's no way you're going to be happy in your day mm. because everything's about what's wrong with the world. Mm. And there's plenty wrong. And Greta Thunberg yeah. is doing an amazing job, right? And she's getting people to understand. But you can't, look at every single piece of life like that. Like you can't yeah. look at, well, I'd be better if I lived there or, well, this food is rubbish or I've got no money or this or that and the other. And that's what people tend to do a lot of. Mm. Now you have to be aware. <laughs> you can't just, just ignore life and just say everything, everything's roses. But from my perspective, if you focus on some of the amazing things life has to offer, like your mm. children, Right? and like mm. your health and your wife and the, the things around you and the house you live in and the fact that there is so much you can do for people, especially in your case, you know, you're reaching out to so many thousands and thousands of people and helping their lives. It's such a fulfilling and rewarding mm. thing that, totally. that that just puts you in this amazing happy state. And you know what happens when you're happy? This is, <laughs> I thought about this yesterday. I walked out of a supermarket, right? And I was, in a, I was in a good mood, as you might think. Walked out of the supermarket. And, I had, and, and, and for the first time in maybe a year and a half, I had some change in my pocket because everything's been contactless, right? Mm. And there's a guy that sits at the, at the entrance, a tramp, homeless, call him what you want to call him, whatever the PC word is for it. And I always see him and I think, well, unless you take contactless, mate, I can't really do much for you, right? Unless I go and buy him something out the, the shop and stuff. And I always go in with the intention of doing it, and I come out and completely forgot to buy him something, right? But I had changed my pocket. So I went, right, here's the date. So I take out five pounds, give it to him. And he's like, oh, mate, thanks very much. I said, yeah, no problem. And um, I'm walking away, and I thought, you know what? When you're in a good mood, you tend to do things more you, – you do more charitable things for other people, mm -hmm. which then brings you more happiness. Mm -hmm. And it's a vicious circle. Keeps going. Right? And you've got so and, much more to give to other people to make you happier and happier. But you know what? You have to have the capacity to wake up with your radar on, finding out what is there about life that I'm going to really 
enjoy today? Mm-hmm. What is it that's out there that I can go, look, I've seen that, I've noticed it. And that's what most people don't have the capacity for because they're focusing on why well, am I so sick? Why am I so tired? I had such bad sleep, this aches, this pain, the brain fog, I can't think I've got this arthritis, whatever it is. And so having that default of I'm going to find it today and it's going to be insane, that's where I think that makes you a lot happier. My three-year-old, three and a half, I say to her every night, I say, right, you got to tell me three things today that made you happy. Mm. And so she'll list them out. And they'll be banal things, right, because she's too young, but she'll be like, oh, I went to nannies, and that was nice. And then I saw my friend at nursery, and that was nice. And then we played on the playground, that was nice. They're great fun. But the reason I'm getting her to think about that is because mm. I want her, as she gets older, to start waking up and saying, right, where am I going to find my things today? Mm. And not wake up and go, that person on Instagram's got this lifestyle and I don't, and my life sucks, and I think I should kill myself at 14 years old, which is happening in the world. Yeah. Right? That's that's not cool. At the same time, I also understand we're in a very privileged situation in the Western world, <clears throat> or in, in our world. Now, I, th- I saw something awful on the news today where um, in the Middle East somewhere, one of the, was Africa, uh, uh, they're having to sell their children to, to feed the rest of their children. Wow. Mate, this is 2021. That's not acceptable. And I'm not yeah. saying you should be happy in that scenario. But if you're privileged enough to be on listening to this show on the internet with a house and all the rest of it, and in that modern life that we have, you've got to understand how privileged you are and start mm. just enjoying it and being happy and not thinking life sucks and you know I, I, the world owes me something. Because that is not a day to live. Mm. This has been awesome, dude. I love the uh, the counselling session, the wisdom. Yeah. And, uh, oh. I totally agree. Um, if if uh, people want more words of wisdom from Paul Burgess, where can they check you out? Uh, well, the first thing would be go to paulburgess.uk, which is the website. And on the front, I mean, go through the site by all means. But on the front page is a. Um, a button you can click and you get a half hour call with me. It's free to talk about anything you want health wise. Um, and you can probably tell by the amount I talk, it's never half an hour. Right? It always goes on longer than that. And it is free. And I'm happy to talk to anybody about anything they want to talk about when it comes to, you know, living a happy, fulfilling life and health and problems that they've got, they haven't been able to fix and all that kind mm. of stuff. Cause that's, that's mainly what I do. And mm. um, so that would be there. So feel free to reach out and call me. You can see me on Instagram, um, which is where I hang out mostly and put out all this nonsense about, you know, what my thoughts are, which is quite crazy for sometimes, um, with, uh, which is Functional Nutrition 1, um, but Marty will have it in the show notes, I'm sure. And, um, well, yeah, just get in contact and, and let me know what you want to talk about because um, the more people we can get on this road, the happier the world will be, and it's really important to do that. I love it. Thank you so much for your time, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for your friendship over the years too. My and, pleasure. Uh, you know, it's yeah. been great, and and, we, and there's a lot more years to go. Indeed, indeed. Look forward to the friendship. Thanks, buddy. See you, mate. Catch you later. Thanks.